Monday, Thursday to Good Friday. As we gather around the table each Sunday between now and then, our times of preparation will be more and more looking at the cross, looking at the death of our Lord Jesus Christ and what it means. So that we come with a better understanding and a better feeling and a better sensitivity toward what Christ did for us. So this morning, if you will, turn with me number 197 to meet the cross of Jesus. 197. Let's sing the first two verses. <laughs> Father, we're reminded of the hymn that says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord, He is good. We've tasted. We know, Father, how good You are. And we not only say thank You. In Jesus' name. Amen.
picking up in Luke chapter 15 where Deborah left off speaking of the prodigal son. And he arose and came to his father. But he, when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight and am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet and bring the fatted calf here and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and found. And they began to be merry. Now, his older son was in the field. And as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And the servant said to him, Your brother has come. And because he has received him safe and sound, your father has killed the fatted calf. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore his father came out and pled with him. So he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years I have been serving you. I never transgressed your commandment at any time. And you never gave me a young goat that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this son of yours came, who has devoured your livelihood with the harlots, you killed the fatted calf for him. And the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. It was right that we should make merry and be glad, for your brother was dead and is alive again. He was lost, and then now is found. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. There was a young teenage boy who one day went to his pastor for advice. And the youngster was kind of scared. And he said to his minister, I left home and I did something that's going to make my dad furious when he finds out about it. What should I do? The minister thought for a minute, gave it some serious thought, and then he said, go home and confess your wrongdoing to your dad. And he's probably going to treat you just like the prodigal son. Well, a couple of weeks later, the boy went back to church, and after church was over, he went to see the pastor, and he said to him, well, I did what you told me to do. And the minister looked at him and he said, well, did he kill the fatted calf for you? And the young man said, no, but he almost killed the prodigal son. <laughs> well, this parable is the third of three parables we find in chapter 15. One's about a lost sheep, one's about a lost coin, and one's about a lost boy. And it's important for us to see in this parable that Jesus isn't trying to teach us about how to take care of sheep. He's not trying to teach us how to take care of our money. He's not even trying to teach us how to be good parents. What Jesus was trying to do is give us a Polaroid moment, a snapshot of God. He's looking to answer the question that people have been asking almost forever. What is God like? Well, first thing we find out is that Jesus shows us a father who loves us enough to let us go, to turn us loose. And this is remarkable, if you'll think about it. Here comes this know-it-all young man, and he comes to his father and he says to him, in essence, look, old man, I'm tired of living on this farm. I want to go, and I want to see the city and all that goes on. And I don't want to have to wait until you die to enjoy life. I want my inheritance, and I want it now. Well, good Jewish boys didn't talk to their daddies like that many, many years ago. I can tell you, they still don't. But the father looks at him, and he thinks about the man's request for a minute. He says, all right, son, 
you got. That's what you're going to get. Now, we got to remember that Jesus is wanting to tell us something here about God. And this is what he's trying to tell us. He's trying to tell us that God does love us enough to let us go. God did not make us robots. We're not bots. You know, check that box. He created us in his own image, whatever that may be. But one thing is certain. We are free to choose our own destiny. We're free agents, if you will. He's given to us our inheritance. And oh, that inheritance takes so many forms. We have amazing minds. And we can use them, or we can waste them. We have remarkable bodies. And we can keep them healthy, or we can totally abuse our bodies. And we have the gift of time and of life and of precious relationships. All of that is at our disposal because he's given it to us and we are free to do with all of these things what we want. There's a book called A Faithing Oak by a man named Robert Rains and he talks about walking along a country road with his young son earlier in life. And the boy looked at him and said, Dad, do you suppose anywhere in the world there is a sign that says trespassing? And the dad looked at him and he said, what do you mean? And the son said, well, look, over there. And over there, there are those signs that say no trespassing. Do you suppose there's a sign that somewhere just says trespassing? And Rains laughed. And he said they talked and had fun imagining what it would be like some night to get up and go and change some